It is Breeders' Cup week. It's a huge week for Thoroughbred Racing and a big week here in Southern California. Joining me now to talk about that as well as some other things, a critically acclaimed chef, an award-winning cookbook author, a television personality, a Breeders' Cup winner and ambassador. His horse, More Than Real, was the 2010 Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf winner. I am joined right now by Bobby Flay. Bobby, it is great to have you on. How are you? Hey, Jim. How are you? Bobby, I'm great. How about you? Glad to be here. Really good to have you here. Hey, Bobby, let me first start with Hurricane Sandy. Why don't you update me on what's the latest, where you are, and what's going on? Uh, yeah, great question. Um, you know, it's not good. I mean, I um, I live in Manhattan, and I lost all the power last night about 8 o'clock, and I'm hearing that it's going to be days uh, in downtown New York before we get power back. Um, you know, the, the financial center uh, of New York downtown really really got hit hard um, by the surge, and so um, it's not very pretty. But uh, as you can imagine, um, New York's New Yorkers are, uh, you know, they're they're uh, resolute and they're and they're and they're getting back on their feet. All right, so Bobby, what about your restaurants? Are they staying open? How are you going to approach that? Uh, it's <laughs> a great question. I just got off the phone. Uh, my New York restaurants, um, Mesa Grill is not open downtown, but my Midtown restaurant, Bar American, we're trying to get open for dinner tonight. It's just, it's just, you know, the, uh, the, all of the um, uh, the public transportation is down. So for all my employees who don't live smack in the middle of Manhattan. I'm having a hard time getting them to to work, so we don't know what's going to happen. All right, so for instance, I mean, do you want to stay open for people that are working, people that are responding, for your employees? What's what's the uh, approach to keeping the restaurants open right now? Well, you know, it's um, it's one of those things where um, when power goes down, it's amazing how much uh, we take it for granted. Um, in in just a few hours, you start looking for food, you start looking for for water, and there's a lot of people from out of town who are you know in the hotels in uh, in Midtown where Bar American is. And so I, th- I just think it's important to get open if you can, um, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. Bobby Flay joining us. All right, so you've got a lot of things going on out here from Southern California for Breeders' Cup Week as well, and you've got this going on at home. So how's that going to impact your week out here? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out there, to be mm. perfectly honest. I mean, who knows when the airports are going to open again. I'm supposed to come out Thursday, uh, but at this point, um, I'm just hoping to get out there at some point over the weekend. I just, you know, I, I just have no idea. It's, you know, all the power is out in New Jersey uh, basically across the state, and uh, I'm supposed to fly out of Newark, so, you know, <laughs> who really knows? Totally understandable. Bobby Flay joining us. Bobby, take me through this. I mean, we've got our first entry in a Breeders' Cup race this weekend, and I'm not going to lie. I mean, I'm tripping. I mean, the whole thing is just so amazing, and it's so unbelievable. You have not only been there, you have already won with a 2010 entrant more than real. I mean, i got to know, what's it feel like to win one of those races? Well, let me first say this to you. Welcome to the Breeders' Cup, Jim Rome. Thank you very much, Bobby. It feels great. It is. It is. Uh, it's probably the most exhilarating moment I've had in my uh, in, in my in my life, except, um, of course, when I had my daughter. But I mean, it's just it's it's one of those things that uh, is really unexplainable. First of all, I barely remember before the race because you get you go incredibly numb. I mean, you think about it. There's no sleep for the you know for a few days beforehand. I'm, I'm sure you're you're sort of counting the days till you get misdirection into the gate, um, and then all of a sudden they're off. And uh, I was with about six of my friends and my wife in the stands, and the guy behind me, a, 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 a horseman named Jimmy Ventura, um, when they came around the when they came around the far turn, he just tapped me on the on the shoulder and whispered in my ear, "You have horse," <laughs> and that's what you want to hear. Um, when they're uh, you know approaching the stretch, and then she went off and won, and uh, it was just it was surreal. I mean, I, we 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 just we didn't stop celebrating for days. <laughs> Bobby, it's like it's almost like this this weird secret society. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm actually getting chills hearing this. I mean, I would think anybody would look at you. People who don't understand it, people who don't do it, would look at somebody like you and say, "Are you kidding me? Look at this guy. He's a mogul. He's got an empire. Everything he touches turns to gold." And he just said the single most exhilarating moment in his life, outside of the birth of his daughter, was his horse winning that race. It's almost impossible to explain to people, but I get it. It's impossible to explain to people, but as you know, Jim, when you take people to the races for the very first time, that's it. They're in the club. Um, it's one of those things. I mean, people get they they get bit by the bug, and and there's no going back. It, it's an amazing thing. I mean, and it, it unfortunately a lot of uh, you know it's you know racing is almost a lot of people think of it as sort of yesteryear sport, but I think it's I think it's actually making a very good comeback. I think that I think that you know now with the Breeders' Cup um, with some really great direction. 
um, I think that uh, you know, you know, our momentum is is, go- is going in the right direction finally, and I, I think that uh, horse racing is going to become. Um, as big of a sport as it's ever been in in the very near future. You know, I hope we're so. Gonna, we're going to start with a win and with misdirection. We need you to win this race. <laughs> Bobby Flay joining us. Yeah, I need me to win this race. I need her to win this race. Hey, Bobby, explain what it is. I mean, it, what is it that you like so much about it? I mean, for instance, number one, is it the racing? Is it breeding? What what got you into it? What drew you into the sport? Well, my grandfather took me to Saratoga Springs in New York, and if you're an East Coast person at all, and you go to Saratoga, you know what I'm talking about. It's um, it's 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 really the Del Mar of the East Coast. You know, there's always the rivalry. You know, what's better, Del Mar and Saratoga? I say I'll take them both all August. Um, you know, they're very very different, but there's something about Saratoga that just captures people. And I was about 12 years old. My grandfather took me there for a weekend, and I never looked back. And then I thought to myself, what would be, it would be really cool if I if I was ever successful enough to actually own a piece of a horse one day. That would be so much fun, and that's what I did. I mean, I slowly got into some, you know, partnerships with people, and then, uh, you know, as time went on, I sort of went off on my own, um, on my own direction. But I love the breeding part of it because I love the idea of having horses, sort of, for the rest of their lives under my care, um, and having their having their um, their progeny and, and watch them run as well, and on and on and on, and just sort of growing these families. Um, but I also love, and uh, I, I'm sure you could attest to this, I love the mornings because you and I have something in common. We work very long hours in our businesses, and then we get to go away um, in, you know, at, at the mornings at the racetrack and watch our horses work out, and there's just something about it. There's something incredibly calming about it. There's something exhilarating about it. Um, but ultimately, it's something that is yours, and it's almost like it's almost like owning a sports team, except you know you don't have to pay you know ten billion dollars to own one. <laughs> and by the way, that's exactly what it is. That's yeah. exactly what it is because no matter how hard we work or how well we've done, we can never ever own a franchise like that. Right. I mean, Bobby, I, I have to think that you feel the same way about this. I, I'm connected to it on a lot of different levels, but it really starts with the animal. I love the horses. Mm-hmm. I'm awed by the horses, their beauty, their athleticism, the work ethic, how hard they want it. I mean, and then when you get a connection to the animal, and the animal goes in there and goes out there and competes, and you know what the stakes are, and you know how hard they try, you so badly want them to do it. I think people think that's just absurd, like, you're connected to the horse, Rome, really? But I'm really connected to the horse. And with the big wins, you feel even more strongly about it because there's such a strong bond between the animal and you. Yeah, the big, the big wins definitely help that bond. But I have to tell you, you're 100% right. I mean, I'm in awe of, of these athletes. I think that they're just incredible athletes. They, um, uh, you know, the, the speed and the power of which they, uh, you know, they sort of, you know, work up to the race and then actually, you know, fly out of the gate and, and run their hardest. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it, there's no feeling like it. I, uh, I, I look forward to watching my horses work out in the morning. I can't wait till, till, till they get entered into a race. And then when I, you know, I, and then it's that moment where you're in the paddock looking at your horse, the jockey gets up, the, the gate pops open and man it's it's just, it's just so incredible Bobby I, can't Flynn, wait. Like, I can't wait for this weekend I'm, I'm sure you're going to be there right yeah no i definitely am i definitely am because the thing is bobby i don't know i mean also explain this it, it it's easy to say of course bobby flay won a breeder's cup i mean he's wealthy he's got resources you need to help me explain that it doesn't matter i mean certainly it matters but money doesn't guarantee anything talk about just how hard it is to get to a race like that, regardless of the amount of money you spend. And even once you get there, you need so much luck. For sure. Uh, you, I mean, so much of it is luck. Um, but you want to be able to try to put yourself in the best position to have good luck, too. I mean, there, there, there's some of that as well. You know, there, um, you know, in the horse racing business, you can spend all the money you want and not be successful. And so, and I think that that's sort of the beauty, and that's and that's some of the that's one of the reasons why people are so attracted to this, is that if it was really easy, if it all made sense, if it was if you could just be, you know uh, breed to the best, um, and you would just automatically get something that would that would, that could run through the wind, it would be easy. Everybody would figure it out. You just spend a lot of money, you would do it. It's not you know like when the New York Yankees want to win the World Series, they go out and spend a lot of money and and, and they try their hardest. In this case. Um, you know, you could spend millions and millions of dollars, and the horse might act, might not actually make it to the races. And when I tell people that, they can't believe that people actually um, go into this business and actually, you know, you know, just sort of put up their resources to do it. But it's really true. Um, and but you know, so yeah, was it lucky? Absolutely. But it was just one of those things where um, I bought more than real um, in Saratoga from a guy named Mike Smith after one race. It was just something I saw about her that I thought, you know, this, this horse could, 
you know, potentially be a very, very good horse. I went to look at her in Saratoga. I had my, my trainer, Todd Pletcher, go and look at her. He said, yeah, I know, I know who she is. I've watched her train. Let's buy her. We bought her, and then she ran up in Canada to qualify for the Breeders' Cup. She actually didn't win. She ran second. But she, she, was, uh, she was good enough to qualify for the Breeders' Cup. And then leading up to the race, Todd Pletcher, who, if you, if you know anything about the horse racing business, you know that he's one of the, the top trainers um, you know, in North America, not, if not in the world, said to me, and this is a guy who does not sugarcoat anything, he said to me about three days before the race, I'm just telling you right now, this filly is training great. And, that's, and at that moment, you know, there's no sleep because <laughs> now I know I have a shot is if she gets in the gate. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up. I was going to say to you, Bobby, how did you sleep that week? Because here I am at Tuesday. I'm not sleeping real well. Oh, no. You're going to have uh, – I can tell you this much. When you get to the paddock, you're going to have bags under your eyes. You're going to be exhausted. But as soon as they come out of the gate, you're going to wake up. <laughs> how many times have you watched that race? 350. I mean, I, I mean, I, I've watched it. I mean, I've literally watched it over 300 times. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing like it. You want to, I wanted to experience it as many possible times as I could, um, and that's why I always tell people. It's like, you know, and, and friends of mine, I'm, you know, I'm starting to get some, some some friends of mine involved, you know, sort of little by little, and they just love it. And, I, and I'm sure you're doing the same thing. I, I, I was looking at Ms. Direction's um, entry, and you know, it's like you have a bunch of people that you're in with, which is fantastic because you all get to enjoy it together. It, it, me, I can tell you one thing. There's no fun to win by yourself. It's great to be high-fiving everybody around you who has a piece of the action. Well, Bobby, as a business person, I mean, number one, you want to share that with somebody because the highs are so high and the lows are so low. But at the end of the day, when those bills come in, it's not bad to break them up three or four ways. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know how that goes. Hey, one last thought. I mean, when you, what, what's it feel like when that horse turns for home and you realize, I mean, you know she's going to win. We're going to win a Breeders' Cup race. Well, um, I have to tell you that <clears throat> when, uh, when more than real... Um, she sort of lowered her shoulders at the top of the stretch. It was, it was just an incredible move, and she just had, a, had this incredible turn of foot, and she just took off. And, a, and around the eighth pole, um, you know, an eighth of a mile to go, which is, you know, for those, for those people that don't follow racing, is probably about 12 seconds from the line. Um, she, uh, it looked like she was clear. And my friends and my wife and every, we, everybody sort of jumped on each other, and I honestly did not see her cross the finish line because oh, wow. we were going bananas. Um, and then, and then here's, the, here's, here's something that you, you would appreciate. The horse wins the race. We get down to the winner's circle, and there's an inquiry oh, man. Uh, against us. Oh, and so man. we had to, uh, you know, the jockey um, that ran second actually launched an inquiry against us um, said that we interfered with her, um, and so I had to wait five long minutes uh, until the uh, steward said, you know, that they disallowed the inquiry and, and let us, uh, you know, take take the trophy home. But that was that was not the fun part of the day. I no can tell you that way, much. man. That is brutal. That's brutal. <laughs> and Gogo, Gogo gave you a really strong ride, didn't he? Oh, he was. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I, I think that jockeys are really important. Um, I, I, you know, I see that you have Mike Smith, you know, riding misdirection. You know, the guy's a professional. He won. You know, he won the Breeders' Cup Classic on Drosselmeyer last year. He, you know, he read, he, he, he rode Zenyatta. You know, this guy's going to get on on mid direction with all kinds of confidence. So, and that's what you want. Bobby Flame, my guest. Bobby, listen, I know you got a lot going on out there. Number one, I want to thank you very, very much for that. I really, really enjoyed that. I hope you make it out here. I would love to see you, and the Breeders' Cup wouldn't be the same without you. So hopefully you can pull that thing off. Hey, you know what, Jim? I look forward to having a glass of champagne with you in the winter circle. Uh, let's get this horse home. Bobby, you're the best. Really, really appreciate you. Thank you very much for the support. Great to talk to you, Bobby. I loved it. Bobby Flay. Man, that's a good time. Even if me, Bobby... Alex Solis and a few other uh, horse racing people enjoyed that. that. That's I mean that's genuine enthusiasm and heart, and that's somebody who's had a lot of success. This is what I always try to say about the sport. That's somebody who literally almost everything he has ever touched has turned to gold. He's a brilliant, brilliant business person. The guy's a mogul, and he just said it. The single greatest moment of my life outside of the birth of my daughter was our horse winning a Breeders' Cup race. And this is what I always try to say. I know exactly what he's talking about. When More Than Real won that race for him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies turf back in 2010, it probably was the single greatest thing that ever happened other than the birth of his child. I'm not sure my wife would appreciate that. Other than the birth of our two kids and me getting married, if Ms. Direction somehow got up, I might say the same thing. However, I saw the early odds. Ms. is 20 to 1. 
It is that tough a race. All right, we'll come back and we'll reset. Stay tuned. My thanks to Bobby Flay.